Welcome back to Another World with my smart food. Anime review episode number eight. Sorry about that. Uh, this episode I'm discussing episode number 17 of the series, which is The Fifth Wife and a Newly Founded Nation. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck does this one adapt from? Oh boy. It adapts from kind of the rest of the chapter of, um, let's see. We're adapted from this book here, where it kind of adapts some of the rest of the chapter for, I think it was chapter three, I think it was. Yeah, chapter three. They practically skip over the uh, the second interlude, which is kind of surprising. And they pretty much adapt most of chapter four. Though they just got a section out of that one. They also start adapting this episode. Book 5, which I kind of thought they would adapt next episode, but no, they have this one. Where this one adapted pretty much the entire chapter, but they trimmed it down, which I'm kind of happy with that. And they adapt pretty much the start of basically chapter 2. Now, this is the cut here. Uh, there's a couple scenes I kind of thought this is they should have kept in. The stuff they trimmed down, I'm fine with it. So, this episode starts off with, well, a scene that. Pro, uh, you have two care. You have the the king of Belfast and the emperor of the Re Regulus Empire, which, by the way, they should have had this scene also in last episode too, but no, the probably was cut due to time. As a matter of fact, there was a whole scene where Toya basically had the the king, the, the emperor of Belfast, where he had come up with a broadcast. Which they actually kept this in the manga version of the story, where he did more than one broadcast that they did last episode. The problem was cut due to time. I kind of thought this over these episodes for the season. Because of stuff happening here, I kind of felt this though they should have extended the runtime of some of these episodes. Especially since there's a good amount of chunk of stuff that happens. I don't mind cutting out the war stuff, but you could have kept some, some really cool stuff in. Like, oh, I don't know. Having the Empire of the Regulus Empire come out to Juan, Ron Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries. They probably cut it due to not just because of time. Maybe, and this is my personal theory, that the studio, J.C. Step, probably couldn't get the licensing rights in time for this episode. Despite the fact, it actually happened in this book. The scene did happen. It was mentioned, it was Ron Wagner, it was, like I just mentioned, it was that song. And this whole thing about taking off uniforms. And in the book itself, they mentioned about the aftermath of the actual thing, which... Uh, it's, it seems like this one move. They want to keep moving along, keep the romance stuff in. Now, in the case of what happens next, this is similar to happen in the book, where you have Toya basically like just agreeing to marry Lou because basically it worked well for the alliance between Belfast and the Empire. Oh yeah, and also the fact that well they're giving some of their territory to Toya to form his own country, along with engaged to Lou. Yep. And here's the thing about this territory, and they completely come from this episode. There is a side quest in the thing where they had to limit all the monsters in the area in order to build this country. Yeah, seriously. Like, before they can start building anything, you gotta limit all monsters. I kind of feel so this sequence, they could have just done a quick little montage. But no, it's never mentioned. It's like, oh, here's this territory. Okay. And he gets territory. And they discuss the castle stuff. Where they mention about various castles. And then, of course, Ch Cheska comes in. Not Cheska, it was um, the one who just has the workshop. She comes in in her different attire that she wore last time. Yeah, in her in a workshop gear. Which, by the way, if you're curious, though, is a scene. Excuse me. Is a scene pulled directly from the book itself. Where she comes out, comes out like that. Yep, uh, it's similar, but she just walks right. She just basically comes open the door. It's not coming out of a gate. So, and I okay, sorry about that. So basically, like okay, we will make a cast based on, and they mentioned about a castle up in the north of the empire, which there's a scene for this in the book too, which they completely cut out of the anime. Oh my gosh, like you're thinking, Nick, that was two scenes they cut. Yeah, they cut it. You could say due to time, but 
given the fact that this this is a really cool sequence, well, yeah, they cut the time, but my guess is they probably, and this is my personal theory, I think they could do an OVA of the stuff they cut, these major scenes. Like, have the first one, have the monster slaying thing in the castle thing. That would be quite nice, but they probably need to move the stuff along. Just move along, move along, get the really good stuff. So, and then it's, oh yeah, the castle build in three days. Now, you might be curious, though. What is the whole sequence of the castle building? Was that kind of complete kind of the enemy? Uh, no. That actually is accurate to the book itself. So, they go inside, and they do mention the fact that all the girls have a special request, which that part was true. And this is mostly trimmed down anyways. There's no furniture in the place, so... Then he has another meeting with two, 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 two of his future father-in-laws, the game Belfast and the Emperor of the Regulus Empire. Oh yeah, mentioned whole set party. Like, okay, interesting. And he mentions, oh yeah, he needs more staff. He also brings, he also mentions that he could be, could be he, well, by the way, in case you're curious though, what's the name of the country that he found? Braunhild, which is still the current name of the, it's the name of the country in the books, which, good they kept that part in. And the thing is, and here's the thing, in the book, basically, we has Brahild, is it, is it maybe a weapon? And they actually changed that to him showing off the gun and saying, yeah, we're named after my gun. Well, I actually named after Brahild, basically, when the Valkyries. Which, yeah, I think that scene, it, saying change is fine. If you're basically very stingy about it, I think... I think anybody who basically wants to stay as accurate as possible to the action books themselves, I think that anybody who complained about this tiny bit of how he gets of how he comes up with name, yeah, it's maybe different from the book, but in my honest opinion, this is perfectly fine. It is fine. And of course we also have Lou uh show off her attire, which of course is the attire from the actual novel novel cover. Yes, the the this very attire Makes his debut this very episode. It's her casual attire. Oh yeah, by the way, all the girls got this little, little like special symbols basically on them. It's the one thing they all connect to each other. So that the castle is built. Then of course they kind of move the sequence up from the previous book, from the next book, into this one here, where after the castle is built, we go to the security, and then he gets a request from one of his maids, which brought from Belfast. Which, by the way, also they mentioned that the mansion in the actual book themselves. Now, this is also accurate in the book itself, where the actual mansion, where Toya lived since, I think, since book one, book one or two. And now he's basically living in the castle now, where it becomes the, um, the embassy for the Bronhild, the, 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 the Bronhild Duchy. Which, yeah, he also has the title of the, of the Duke, and of course, they all, all the girls agree on the title. And, of course, the fact they all agree living there. Yep. And that's when um, the workshop lady comes in to discuss the castle stuff. And, like, then apparently off screen, they apparently meant they have where, oh, the maids from the mansion are here. So, if you're curious, though, was that sequence going in the book? Uh, not really. They're just there in the book. So... JC Stab is doing the best they can with this one. So, then we have Tabaki show up here. Yes. First time she's been seen since toward the end of season season one. Yes, she shows up here. And the scene itself is mostly accurate. Her media with Toya, where she mentions that, oh, that the clan has been disbanded, but the people who remain from the clan basically will move to the Empire, become the first citizens, because the new lord is a complete jerk. He is very greedy. Like, oh, our coughing, our coughing stuffers are empty. Tack the citizens like crazy. And ignore all advice from his retainers. Yeah. So, no wonder why, basically, they left the country. Because this guy was a complete idiot. He apparently had no idea what the heck he was doing. So, they mentioned about a guy in this episode who's like, they're basically a guy they respect. Kind of like, they're, like, kind of like a lord. Not like, like a lord, but like an administrator. Toya meets up with them. He suggests about making roads. And this is like adapting a little bit from the book itself. Like they're basically splicing stuff later on in the book into here. Which fine. They're probably moving the story along. They're probably trying to establish stuff there. So we don't have to do it later. That's my personal anyways. 
I don't think it interrupts the story at all. I yeah, I honestly don't think so because I think I remember from, I remember when I read the book originally. I think this did happen. Yes, I did spend some time rereading book five, which this is book five right here. And here's a fun fact about this book. Did you know this cover was actually teased as the promotional image for the season? Yes, seriously. This very cover was used as a promotional tease for the season. Because mo mostly put the first two cover just as Toy and Couple of the Girls. Here it's Toy and All the Girls. With all the girls he had at this point in time before he gets his next fiance. He will be getting one soon, don't worry. <clears throat> so... They basically mention, so the the shinobi basically come in and they basically just, well, live there. And it comes security. And I mentioned the shinobi also gets side jobs. Which, yes, this is act from the book. And and this is something interesting, though. They bring back other characters in the previous season, too. It's like, wow, we get a visit from the Ishin stuff. Which, great. I think it's fantastic. Then, of the course, basically, like, they sell their stuff. There's a shop. And of course, mention about the Sibun Inn may possibly set up an actual branch here. Okay. Now, in I remember also in the books as well that the Adventures Guild from Belfast does have a branch in Brunhild. I think it was suggested by the Guildmaster. They set up a branch, I believe it was either in this book or the very next book. They that the the Guildmaster comes to visit Toya this branch, and he immediately agrees to set up a branch there, no problem. Now is it for book five? I think it is. I'm not sure, but that does happen. So, after everything all set up there, then we have the party. Which, oh boy, this whole party takes up an entire chapter. Like, pretty much the entirety of chapter one of book five. Though, basically, when it gets to stuff with the, we show the later portion of the episode, we have people doing bowling. Yes, bowling, playing pool, air hockey, Looks like a version of Domino's or Shogi. I'm not sure what it is. Various games that show like have an actual bar. If you're curious though, is this accurate to the book? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yep. And then they have like Toya. They have all five of his fiancés off to all these several world families. Which by the way, they do not spend time identifying every single freaking person who shows up here. You can obviously see the, the king of Belfast and his family. Uh, though his brother's not here, surprisingly. Just just basically him. Uh, Toya does mention the book. I think he mentioned the book that they had to limit to five people. Now, it was suggested to him they could bring the families. In the book, I'm surprised they cut out of the anime. I think it was the Emperor Regulus who basically mentioned it. So we have Regulus, Belfast. I think it's like four or five different countries. I could visit. Oh yeah, also, there's also a thing where um, the author he met like two episodes back, the one where he got the uh, the book that features the gay romance stuff, which he's the writer of. Yeah, and of course she does make appearance in this episode, which he does bring in the fact. Oh, maybe he gets offer his daughter as a proposal of alliance, and he's like, Nah, she's got a partner. And of course Toya politely declines, like he was going to decline anyways, but it's like, Nah, she's perfectly fine as is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> which I do appreciate though the fact they featured all five of these royal families oh yeah there's a brief scene in here with uh, Toya and Renee which yes this is a scene from the book and here's a shocker there is no change to the scene nope none Toye just puts up a basically a portal that takes back that that basically like a he'll a special portal and people get access to it and gets a record and they open a special gate they can wherever they want to go and that's when you get the, the the whole thing with the with the king of Belfast which yes this scene is completely one hundred percent accurate which I gotta preach the fact they actually have one moment in this episode that is completely unaltered because it's very quick. Yep. The Bashi stuff basically is quite interesting. I mean, I do preach the fact they brought it back.
Yeah, and also when she shows up, there's this hilarious moment which they basically play from last season where you held the girls reunite with with Tabaki and Lean is about the grope her rear end. Yeah, she has a thing for groping her because she has a bigger chest than she does. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, yeah, got hands with. This is still a pretty good episode, though I gotta admit, uh, cutting out two scenes probably did kind of hurt a little bit. But I kind of felt this though this episode, this episode being 23 minutes, which it's okay runtime. I did enjoy the party sequence, which glad was very quick. Um, I kind of wish that certain portions of this episode was longer, and I also kind of admit that this episode, the last one, should have been about five minutes longer. Yes, I think this episode, these two episodes should run longer because a lot of content is cut here. Like, I do mean a lot was cut here. Because basically the whole war stuff takes up basically an entire chapter. The whole um, stuff with that. Now, also, I should mention too that in a future episode, we will be debuting the next fiancé, but... In the very next episode of the series, uh, which is, this one's very important, and I'm very much looking forward to this one, because from the description I've read, it's basically Toya meeting, uh, basically, Ellie, Linz, and Hughes basically announcing them that he's engaged their daughter, well, in the case here too, their uncle and uncle, which is... I appreciate the fact we do this next episode, but I kind of think that Renee, it's something of that her character has been literally her development to cut from the anime. I kind of think that they should have a whole episode dedicated to her, or at least, and I think the series should do this in O V A and have animation dub, have basically the dubbers dub it. Because Call like an episode of Renee where we explain stuff basically that was cut from the anime due to time. And I could definitely see him do it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff for her. <coughs> oh, <excuse me. coughs> excuse me. Yeah, but still a pretty good episode nonetheless. Can't wait for next week's episode, which air next week. Okay, so. That's it for Stick of View. Next up will be Comic Corn. That'll be after that. Okay, thanks, you. Bye.